gentlemen, and welcome to the show. Yes, to another show. Another show of fun and excitement and, well, whatever it is that we do. So how's everybody doing? How are you doing, Fernando? Ah, uh, cold. Cold, yes. Cold, yeah. We're wearing our hoodies. How was your Ooh. day off? That was good. Yeah, door open is going to drive me crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That's bad, bad, bad thing. I got to fix that. Make me nuts. You know, when it gets cold, this door just opens up all on its own. Yeah. But hey, we fixed it. That's what Phoenix Gold Amps do. They fix open doors. Or they create open doors. I don't know how you want to look at it. But we got a show for you tonight. We got a couple things that we're going to talk about before we get on with it. I hope everyone is doing well. What's up, Luis? And if you're not, well, I hope you're doing as well as you can. But let's head over here to the laptop because we want to take a look at this here. This is the 12-volt clean wire club, guys. Mm -hmm. Oh, hang on. Before we do that, let me shut that off. All right, so here we go. This is the 12-volt clean wire club, and this was Fernando's pick of the week. Yeah. Who brought this to us? Jason. Jason did an excellent job. I yeah. really like this. This, of course, is the Phoenix Gold 10-channel relay bank. I was like... For the when I saw it, I'm like, oh, that's a DSP, and then I'm like, no, it's not a DSP. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, oh, that's cool. Someone yeah. does an excellent job in the description down below mm -hmm. of describing Explaining how it works. What it was. The yeah. one thing I want to point out that I I thought was hilarious. Um, apparently, there's some people out there that don't uh, know how to do amp racks or haven't done a lot of amp racks, and they were talking about how the positive and negative wires were not the same length. Mm -hmm. What they failed to miss is that if you look at the positive, you look at the negative, and you look at the, re the remote, you'll see it's an ascending order mm -hmm. or descending order, depending descending on which way order. you want to do it. Mm -hmm. But the reason they do it that way is because you want the wires to stay as close together as possible. If you try to drill holes that you have to fit the power wire through, if you'll notice how close they are right here. Mm -hmm. So now you want to drill, either have to drill an oval where all the wires go through an oval, mm -hmm. but see, we didn't want to do that. We want to have a nice circle that our wire goes through. So you do it that way so that you can get circles and keep the wires nice and tight packed together and you don't have to fan them out at the end. So that is why it is done like that. Yep. yep Some yep, of yep. the people that were talking about how they're OCD and it was like, well, you're not, you're looking at it the wrong way. It, I just... I just mm -hmm. laugh. I just laugh because I'm just like, it, it, if it does, that's for a reason. Yeah, and it, it was, and it was funny. It was mm -hmm. like, yeah, I, I really don't think the person that's going to take the time to do all of this is yep. not going to, to care about that. Yeah, right. Correct. Yeah, it's funny. But hey, that's I, what makes this yep. interesting. So thank you, Jason. Jason, you did a fabulous job. Keep up the good work, guys. Keep posting your pictures over there. We hope you like what we've done to the Clean Wire Club. We've changed it just a bit. Um, mm -hmm. Fix that a little bit more. Something. More, more Fernando in the shot, less of, less of my shoulder. Ah, uh, there we go. Good evening, gentlemen. Tattoo. Fantasy Iceland. <laughs> All right, so now I'm hot. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, right? As soon as you start getting in there. Yeah. What's up, Peter? Uh, PA, it's 30 degrees. Ooh. It ain't that here. It's probably, and it's, I, I'm thinking it's probably high 50s. It's in the 50s. Yeah, uh, 50s. which is, is borderline running weather, which means I'll be running as soon as the show is over, so I can't wait. I'll be seeing y'all in June. How far out should I call Paul? About two months. But yes. I don't know what it'll be like then. Back from Vegas. Good for you. So man. I would definitely recommend you to call now and see how is the scheduling. Yeah, I mean, June is just quite call. a ways off. Yeah. God only knows what's going to be happening yeah. in June. That's for sure. Oh, hey. I got a potential. Now, one other thing we wanted to show you guys before we get going into the whole thing. So let us know where you're from, the weather and all that. Jason. Is, what's up, Jason? There, um... Ooh. Hold on, I gotta unlock the phone here. Oh yeah. Yes, who sent me a text message? No. Um what's up, Mark? Oh right. Mark. So I wanted to show you guys this app. This is the this is the Kicker U app. Alright. This is on an iPhone. I don't know if they make it for Android or not. But one of the there's there's a couple things on here. Now this is an older app and they, they've kind of kept up with it, but not really. But if you'll notice, they have this thing here called Wiring Wizard. And this is one thing that's really cool. So with this, you pick the number of subwoofers you have, mm -hmm. single voice coil, dual voice coil, what the ohm load is. In this case, let's say dual two ohm voice coil. And it'll show you series wiring. If you scroll down, it'll show you series parallel wiring. It'll show you parallel series wiring. So it has all the fun 
wiring diagrams all built into it for you, which is really cool. And like I said, oh, hey, there's the notes. Uh, let's go back to the app. Then we'll go into tone generator. A lot of you guys like, ah, oh, where do I get a tone generator? There's one built into the app right here. And if you hit just do it, it'll start playing. As you can see across the top there, you can use your finger to adjust the frequency. That's kind of cool. And then it also has a hit stop, hit pink noise, has a pink noise generator. So that's pretty neat and go back. And then the one thing, power wire calculator. This is something you guys ask us about all the time. What size power wire should I run? All that fun stuff. So at the top here, it says number of amplifiers. So we'll select two. Select done. And then your distance as far as how long your power wire you think it's gonna be. So for off screen here, we have a Toyota 4Runner and we were gonna be running 10 feet of power wire and probably two feet, oh, two feet of ground. Select done. These are class D amplifiers we're gonna be putting in. And so from the distribution block to amplifier number one, how long is the wire gonna be? We'll say a foot, we'll select done. Ground is gonna be about, well ground isn't going to distribution. Ground's gonna be about two feet, we'll select done. Scroll over to the next amplifier, there again, a foot, done. And we'll say two feet, done. And now on the bottom it says results, tap that. And what it's giving us is, oh, well, I gotta go back. You know what, I forgot to say how much power these things are. So our sub-amp is 300 watts, done, and our highs amp is 800 watts, even though it's really only 500. We'll say 800, just because we're gonna go maximum power here. Now what we have is total system power is 110 watts RMS, total system currents is 104 amps. What size power wire to distribution block should you run? Four gauge. And then it goes on to tell you wire, power wire comparison, copper clad aluminum versus full spec copper. System voltage, in this case it's predetermined at 13.2, but you can put whatever you want in there. You can tap on that and if you want to put 12 point, I'm sorry, 12.6, you can, it's like done and it'll recalculate. But it'll give you a voltage drop for both copper and CCA, power output for both copper and CCA, and then power loss with both copper and CCA. So it's a pretty nice little app that you do have to pay for. They don't give it to you for free. But we thought that would be one of those cool things to share with you guys because it's something you guys ask about. Now they also have things in there. Uh, let's go back into it. Um, let me go back because yeah, there was one more thing I wanted to show you. Uh, port converter. So for those of you guys trying to build boxes, uh, airspace calculator. So you can tell it what size wood you're using, your uh, width, height, and depth. Uh, driver displacement. So it's actually a really cool piece of uh, technology. If you're a kicker fan, it does have all the kicker specs in it too if you're trying to build a kicker box. But that was it. I just wanted to share that with you guys. I've had it for years, and but today we needed it. Uh, we were doing something and we're like, hey, what size wire should we run? And we were debating we over it and we're like, hey, <clears throat> let's just do that. Hi, mom. Hi, Mom. All right. So All right. with that being said, take us to our first dilemma. All right. The first one is I have an amplifier that comes with a high-level input. Okay. Do I still need to buy an LOC? Also, my Audi, my Audi comes with the BO system, <laughs> and it has an external amplifier. Should I tap into the speaker wires or in the subwoofer wires? All right. So thank you for telling us what kind of car it is. It's an Audi. Not in any. Couple things. That's a great question, by the way. I have an amplifier that I just bought and it has a high level input on it. Do I still need to buy one if I, do I still need to buy one? Well, that depends. Depends on what kind of car you have. Now you've told us the next clue. You have an Audi with a BO system. Chances are good you're gonna be going out of the subwoofer because you're connecting a subwoofer, so you wanna make sure you come out of that sub output on the radio. That's going to be about a 20 volt output, either 20 to 40 volts of output. Now what you do is you go back to, which you can test for with a digital multimeter, a test track, like a 40 hertz test tone, putting it on there, set your thing to AC, and see what kind of output voltage you have. I'll save you the headache, it's about 20 to 40 volts. Now, you gotta go back to your owner's manual for your amplifier and see what kind of input voltage it'll take. Mm -hmm. Some of the new amplifiers, like the Audi controls and some of the, the newer key amplifiers, will take up to 40 volts. Some of them older ones will take up to 20 volts. 
but most amplifiers are gonna take between five and 10 volts of high level input. Now we've just said, oh crap, I've got 40 volts of input or output from there, that means input in the amplifier. I can't just hook my, act, my amplifier up to that because I will melt the input section on there. So then, yes, to answer yeah. the first question is, do I need an external high level to low level adapter? The answer would be yes, because of what you've told us. We know now, because of the car and that you have a BO system, you are gonna need some form of external high level to low level adapter, but you're in luck. There's two that I'll recommend for you. You can get into the LC1i <laughs> from Audio Control, which is simple as far as it's in design. It has a single RCA input as well as high level input. Mm -hmm. We happen to have one, where do we have that? Ah, we have it right here. So we have the LC1i right here. We'll switch the Fernando cam. This guy right here, because you have a subwoofer output, my guess is you, you'll have some bass roll off, but nothing to lose sleep over. You have your speaker level input right here. This will take 40 volts of input. Up to 40 volts, yeah. Yeah, up to 40 volts. You have your RC output here. The reason why it has an input is it's got a line driver built into it, which you won't be using it for that. But this is an awesome little affordable high level to low level adapter that can go into the system and make everything sound wonderful. Mm -hmm. That would be the first one i recommend. The second one I'd recommend is because you said it had a BO system in it, we know it's gonna have some form of equalization done to it. Now, depending on what kind of subwoofer you're planning on putting in, you may need some de-equalization done. So that means this guy here. This okay, one, now. I'm working on it. This one is a little bit more sophisticated. This one has the ability to DEQ the system. So if you don't like the subwoofer output curve that it has, this will allow you to go in there and fix it. It does it all on its own. There's just a setup process that you go through. There's a couple buttons here on the end, right here. I'm sorry, right here where the key button is. You play a couple test tones. We have a video showing you how to do it. But these, one of these two guys right here will give you 40 volts, up to 40 volts of input and solve your problem. And then you can hook up your amplifier to it without having any worries. Mm -hmm. There we go. All right. Now, for those of you that have the same problem, but might not have a subwoofer output and you'd like to fix the bass roll off, there again, you can still do the kicker, or if you want to fix bass roll off, not that page, this page, we have the LC2i Pro, which has AccuBase with the set light on it. So one of these and three- it comes with the- uh, Comes with the bass knob. It comes with the bass knob. There you go. Ooh. Yeah, I know, bass knobs are important. I, they they are important. That. I, don't, I don't know why, but. All right, now do we talk about the LC2i Pro. So the Pack 72 is out of the question. Yes. All right. Because yes, that the only takes 10 volts. The next question is, hey guys, I have a question. What's the difference between the Amp Pro kit and the LC2i Pro from audio control? What's the difference between an Amp, Amp Pro, Pro and, and the LC2i Pro? Okay. All right, I can see where this show's going tonight. So since we're talking about Amp Pro, we happen to have an Amp Pro right here, mm -hmm. this guy. Let me pull it out of the box right here and we'll talk about it. Now, there is more than just an Amp Pro. These over here, the iData, are also very similar to Amp Pros. You just use a DSR-1 instead of this little box here. I think that's what a lot of people why they confuse an amp pro with a high level to low level adapter and they don't understand. So if we look at both of these here, go back to Fernando cam. If we look at both of these here, this looks, well, it doesn't look like all that much. However, once we pull this part out and we go, holy crap, what is all this? This is all data connections. And what these are designed to do is when you have a factory premium sound system, such as in this case, this is a Toyota, so this would be a JBL system, there is a left and right full frequency output happening before the amplifier. The problem is, is it's not controllable through the volume knob. It's fixed. This device will talk to that. It can take that signal in. And because it's connected to all the other bus networks in the car, just like when you do this volume control here, you're actually turning the sound up inside of the amplifier. Because this talks to the system the same way the amplifier does, this volume will now go up and down. This will also give you the ability to add an optional Tosh link. So if you're going to go into a DSP, you don't even have to use the RCAs. You can just get a full write in, call it digital, and be super cool. That's sold separately. That is, that's why I said optional. 
that's what that means. Pretty cool. Anyways, this is using that full 20 to 20 output coming from the factory radio. What this is doing is this is not that. This is going to go after the amplifier, so this is now taking in that 40 volt, 10 volt, 20 volts of signal that is EQ'd, may have bass roll off, and it is through elect through elect uh, through a circuit board, there we go, is slowing that down to a normal four volt output that we can then go into our aftermarket amplifier with. Uh, it is not, this is done, this is using high level via electricity or electronic high level to low level adapter. You do have passive high level to low level adapters. That look like this. This is a this is a passive high level to low level adapter, and basically what you're looking at is these two pieces. Oh, back up. These two pieces here are what is doing your the resistors, and they're choking that signal down and passing it out. The reason why there's a circuit board in here is because it's using that's for the signal sense circuit that's built into it. Take that out, and you'll just have these two guys here. So this is a dum dum style high level to low level. This is a smart high level to low level adapter. And this has nothing to do with high level to low level. It's just communicating with the car and giving you the car's full frequency output. No EQ, no bass roll off, no fake engine noise, no nothing. So anytime you have the option to do something like this or something like these mm -hmm. or a Zen A to B or mm -hmm. something along those lines, I strongly recommend doing it. You'll get a better result as far as sound goes because most of the time the sound is what you're going for. What's poppin'? Right. What's up? Uh, is there a sub box for an 08 F350 crew cab? Someone was asking also too when they were talking about because um, Frostbite is gone, MTI is out of your price range. Check out a, uh, a Trend. A Trend is really popular. We use a lot of their boxes. They make really nice purpose built boxes. Uh, and then, of course, the most affordable boxes out there, which are nice when you get the Rhino Line versions of them, is the Q Power. They make a, uh, you know, it's very, they're affordable. And if you get the Rhino Line versions, so far the ones that we've done, have, we haven't had any issues with, meaning they've been nice and sealed and you can beat them up. And trust me, our customers aren't some of the nicest people when it comes to their equipment. So, all, all right. Good. Uh, do I need to disconnect my negative battery terminal on my 2020 Accord when connecting the and disconnecting wire harness and the speaker wires behind the panel? I was too busy reading Hey Nando, the Focal K2's call. They are jealous you're cheating on them with morels. <laughs> it's just how the world works, baby. It's how the world works. Uh, read me that again. All right. Will this live show be available to review? Yes, this live show we have all the live shows that are on Monday go up tomorrow on YouTube. So we do the we do the rebroadcast on YouTube on right, Tuesday. We used to, so yeah. yes, you you get to have all kinds of fun. If you just watch that and you're like, what? It'll be up tomorrow. You'll be able to watch it again. All of right, course, man. We don't create stuff. To, we make it hard to find, but it's out there. <laughs> it is out there. Um, all right. So the question is. Do I disconnect my battery, my negative battery terminal on my 2020 Accord when connecting and disconnecting wire harness and the speaker wire behind the door panel? Uh, no. Do not do that on your Accord. And let me explain why. Because, yes, most people say, yeah, disconnect the battery and go to town and do all that. As long as the key is off, don't worry about it. Now, with that being said, there are certain times where disconnecting the battery does make sense. So for example, if you're going to be disconnecting an airbag, I recommend disconnecting the battery. Mm -hmm. It's to be safe. It's a safety thing. You don't want to plug that thing back in and have the airbag explode. Back to the Accord though, because this is very Accord centric. And we found this out the hard way and almost had to both go to the hospital because like we were going to have heart attacks. The problem with the Accord, as well as most Hondas, when you disconnect the battery, when you connect it back up, you have to be done with whatever you're doing and be prepared to drive because the car has to relearn the battery. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to take the door panel off and, or whatever and disconnect the battery, when you reconnect that battery, you better be done with everything it is you need to do because what's going to happen is going to pop up in the dash and it's going to say, please drive car. 
-hmm. And if you do not drive the car like it's asking you to do, you're going to get the fault code that says everything in the car is broken. And I mean every single thing in the car is broken. It will just turn into a ticker tape of the mirrors don't work, the seats don't work, the airbags don't work, the tire pressure doesn't work because the car has not learned the electrical system. It's as simple as putting the car in reverse, backing it out, rolling about 10 feet, it'll tell you you're good, boom, boom, done. Mm -hmm. It's just one of the setup processes that has to be done. Some cars are like that. Chrysler is one of those cars that is like that. If you disconnect the battery and it sits for too long, it's gonna ask you to turn the car on and let it sit for 20 minutes, not starting because it won't allow you to start. It hasn't learned those things yet. It's just the computer going in and rechecking all its connections to make sure it's doing what it needs to do. So, another bad example of that is like a Volvo CX90, that cool SUV. There's an airbag in the dash, and even with the car off, if you unplug it, you're gonna get a warning. You do have to disconnect the battery in that car. So it's one of those things where, in a Volkswagen Beetle, same thing. Mm -hmm. You pull that dash kit without disconnecting that battery, you get a check engine light, or you get, a, sorry, you get an airbag light. So sometimes it's hard to tell. If you wanna err on the side of caution, always disconnect the battery. There's nothing wrong with doing that, but, <laughs> Be prepared, you might just get just as much grief with that battery disconnected mm -hmm. as if it is connected. What car did we, the Porsche, the Porsche we did last week, same problem. Um, you, we disconnected the battery because we pulled the seat out mm -hmm. and we disconnected the airbag. We didn't want the airbag light to come on. Plug it back in, get all done, and what do we get? We get a light and it's like, you know, this thing is, is not ready. And basically what it is, is it's the system that says, hey, I need to relearn the electrical system in the car. Start the car up, we backed it out, we go 10 feet, light goes, thank you, pull it back in, and you're all done. It has to see that it is there. Yeah, and it's just okay. checking itself. All right. Let me see. Uh, what do you think about six, six and a half scar subs in a 2016 Chevy Silverado? Do like four of them? I think that'd be nice. I mean, you got two in your car I got right two. now. Honestly, I was so impressed with the eight inch. Oh yeah, but oh, you probably have to raise the seat to do eight inch. I think you would be okay to do. Oh no, we did. That's right, we did the Gately box of eight. That's what I'm saying. And you didn't have and to raise the seat. And that was four, four eights. Yeah. So. Boy, you want to talk about an expensive box? <sighs> Although I will tell you, Q Power does make a box for that. So, yes. you, know, you know, if you want to do it on the uh, affordable, you know, price point, um, check out the Q Power. I think they make a two, two or three or four eights box for that. But mm -hmm. anyways. Yeah, but I mean, they, I mean, I have two six and a halves in my car right now, and they sound really good. I love them. Now it says, okay, it says, don't need sub, just want it to sound better. The other thing you might want to check out is the JBL Fuse. The JBL Fuse is just a little tiny thing. You need an amplifier to power it. It's it's like, it looks like a, looks like nothing. And you can take it apart and lay them too flat underneath the back seat, and it will drop, it will blow your mind. I guarantee you. I mean... No. What's up, guys? 38. Oof. I was thinking yeah. that he said, I don't need sub, just want to be sound. No, I was answering somebody else's question. Yeah. Uh, Allison, where it says that. No, he wants subs. Right. Um, all right. Um, Go with Kicker Q Class for the Honda. Love the vids. Okay. I'm just what John said, reading what John. John. Uh, any tips to integrate into a 2020 Chevy Blazer non premium? I have been unable to find any type of harness. I don't want to have to cut the harness. I totally understand. Um, right now, there isn't a simple solution for that. Nobody's really making anything cool. And the only T-harness that's available comes with a DSP. So, yeah, kind of sucks. Now, I will say that somebody has found, uh, we had a guy come in the other day who had found the harness. It's about 80 bucks. There was two, one that's in Texas, I think was $240, which mm -hmm. is ridiculous. But there is a Chinese harness you can buy that he found for about 80 bucks, which sucks because it's like a $15 plug. Uh, PAC was going to make them, but then in their infinite wisdom, they decided not to. Go PAC, go. Um, so, yeah, right now there is no great answer for that. However, one of the things you can do, I understand you don't want to cut the harness. Totally get it, because you want to be able to plug it back in and go to factory. What we've been doing in lieu of actually having the harness is we go up a little farther in. So, like, here's the harness. We go in about six inches, and we solder in a second harness. So we cut the speaker wires and then we solder in our own harness 
that we can plug and unplug and then we plug into those. So we make our own T harness so that if we do need to unplug it and go back to factory, we can and it just clicks in and it's nice. Um, you can check out like Volkswagen makes the 1784 harness is kind of like the universal harness for uh, cars. Uh, you get a, a 70, 1784 and a 71, 1784, get two of each and you can make your own harness. Uh, which one you use? Uh, did you just reply? The Chevy? Yeah, the 2020 right. Chevy. All right. I have a 2016 Jeep Renegade with the Beats audio system. Will the pack APHCH03 work for making a T harness for the factory amplifier? Looking to connect an aftermarket amplifier into the factory speakers wiring without cutting the plug. I'm gonna get an amp pro for that. It's got you, you'd get the amp pro. I mean, you get the there. I think that's the eight. Yeah, you'd still get the amp pro. I mean, I don't know why you wouldn't get the amp pro for it. I mean, you're. Yes, the harness will work. The, the harness will work. It'll do what you need it to do. But I would still get the amp pro. And if you could find one, I'd get the sub pro for that. That's just the subwoofer output, which makes it even easier. They, that's a new product that that we're not talking about because. They, they don't have a lot of them, but they do make the sub pro for that, which is just like this, just it has a single output to go for sub. So, packdashaudio.com, you can check out all that cool stuff there for sure. What was that? Uh, 2020 Forerunner non JBL head unit needs louder, lead, need load resistors. Is that what you're saying? Speaker, wait, needs speaker load? No. No, it doesn't. However, I would still recommend going with the um, LGD Blues from uh, Audio Control. These guys here. Uh -huh. Just to give it the small amount. Grab your camera. Oh, I'll grab it. You're, you're looking. I got it. I would still recommend getting a set of these, the Audio Control LGDs. That will help smooth out any issues you might have. Um, but yeah, that would be cool. Alright, uh, what is your opinion on the Kenwood Old Pioneer? What is my opinion on the Kenwood or the Pioneer? Double Dan Radio. Well, I mean, they make several, um, yeah. models, you know. I personally like Kenwood, so. Okay, we'll work with that. I work, I work on a 2002 Camry put in a jail audio system on it. And it was pretty difficult to get the computer to learn to relearn how to stay on, how to stay on with the RPM. Yeah. Starting the cell after live you guys a better intro. Yeah. I mean it's like like we say before. What was that? I'm sorry. Like we say before, you just have to, you know, relearn the the car. Let re let it relearn it. Yeah. Take time, go slow. I know. Does the DMA ten have a global EQ? The answer to that is unfortunately no. It does not. Ground yeah. question. On a 2017 F-150, I watched several all, several if not all of you videos on the F-150s. Yes. When you first start running grounds, these trucks you were putting them through the body. Correct. We went to the frame rail. And to the frame, exactly. What's the benefit? So here's the deal. When we first started doing the F-150s, and, and there's this is one of those topics that it's almost turned into butt connectors versus crimp cast versus solder. And so here's what happened. It's an aluminum body for those of you that don't know. The frame is made out of steel. When the truck first came out, everyone's like ground to the frame. Some people will still ground to the aluminum. There's two, when you pull the whole back of the car out, there's two factory ground bolts located here and here next to the windows. Some people use those and they have success with it. We grounded to the frame. And what we had done is we took a zero gauge, went to the frame, came up from the frame to the battery. The problem we ran into is that this particular time, the customer had, was getting the first generation Zen A to B. And Apparently, they have issues with ground reference, meaning that if the ground is 100%, you run into some crazy things that happen. So, we 
got told by nav tv that we had to rerun the ground at zero gauge up to the battery in order for the problems that their unit was having to go away i was like okay um so this was like a six month thing that we dealt with between the customer nav tv and and us and in the end you know it's their product it's their piece and they told us how they wanted it to be installed and it's their piece so we're not there to argue with them about it we mm -hmm. said okay no problem you know we don't we don't care if that's how it needs to be done it needs to be done but ever since that day that is how we've done it we've just ran a battery power and ground and been done that's it there's no room for debate there's no room for question there's nothing it's just how they expect it we use a lot of the A to B pieces. So if that's how they want it, that's how they get it. Uh, and that's it. Now, as far as what you want to do, we never had any issues other than that one time doing it any other way. None at all. Perfect. None. Okay. So is there a, another way to do it? Of course, there's another way to do it. But the thing you always have to keep in mind is that if you run into any issues, the first thing you're going to have to do is add a ground. So we just do it from the get-go. And that's right. it. I like to uh, I like to do my own build. I have a 2016 Chevy Silverado with both system. I want to add six subs in LC7i with a SCAR amplifier. What plug would I need to build my own T harness to go around the both system? I plan to add another amplifier later for new speakers as well. Okay, you can't go around the Bose system. You need an Amp Pro, mm -hmm. and that's it. Okay, they make an Amp Pro specifically for that car that ties in with the Bose system. You can get the T-Harness, the and that's you're done. You're not going around that system. And you have not, to go after that system. You're not using the LC7i. And you're not using an LC7i. Go to Pack Audio. Pack-Audio.com. Pick yourself up the Amp Pro like we've been talking about on the show. Same piece is going to be like that. There's a right way and a wrong way to do everything. And the LC7i is a great high level to low level <coughs> adapter. We use them all the time. Here's the LC2i, it's phenomenal. But the right product for that, the right thing to do You're is- You're gonna get better results. The, is the Amp Pro and call it a day. That's gonna give you your six channel outputs. You know, because if you tie it, okay. So if you tie into the Bose amplifier, which for, for one thing you can't, get rid of it you have to keep it in there because it's on the bus network of the car so you're not taking it out unless you have a device that can reintroduce it back into the bus which for right now nobody makes one of those even the zen piece you have to keep the factory amplifier in there because it has to talk to the bus now that data between the radio and the amplifier is talking over the most bus which means it's a digital signal between the radio and the amplifier so there again there's nothing before the amplifier that you can tap into because you have to have a da converter built in there to make it actually work. So you're gonna go after the amplifier. Now the Bose system in that truck is EQ'd heavily, both time alignment, <coughs> all pass filters, which is phase correction at specific frequencies, and equalized. Nice. So LC7i, not gonna work because it's only six channels. It's not eight channels, which is what the car has. Technically, the car has seven, unless it has a center channel, which has eight, because the tweeters are on channels one and two, three and four, five and six, and seven for the sub. LC7i is six channels. You can't sum these things either. So unless you're gonna leave off the rears, which my guess is you're probably not, because you're gonna want your backup sensors to work, because the backup sensors come through the speakers. Um, so the right tool for the job is this. All right. It's a lot of work doing this stuff, guys. Even though it's a four-year-old car, five-year-old now, it's still a very sophisticated piece of equipment. Yeah. Put a new radio in, you don't have any of these problems. That, that would be nice. That would be nice. Yeah. <clears throat> guys, I got the DSP installed and everything is time aligned. What is the best way to tune each, cha each channel? With an EQ. I'm sorry, with an RTA. You gotta and have an RTA. Do you use Y noise for the mid bass and pink sub? Noise. Also, mono pink noise. Uh, when we tune a car, hold on. Ah, oh, don't break, don't break. All right. So when we tune a car, we have an app for that. As we just showed, if you caught earlier, we were talking about the cat, the. Uh, the Kicker app has pink noise built into it, but the app we prefer to use when tuning a car is. Go to the phone. Is this one right here, Educar? This one, tap that. Uh, so you have test and you have tune. 
So this allows you to test to find out what kind of sound you have coming out of your car. So for example, like we were just talking about the EQ and the all pass filters and the time alignment from the factory Bose system, mm -hmm. using these tones here that I'm highlighting will allow you to actually hear things like that if you know what to listen for. But when you go into the tune section, this also gives you left pink noise, right pink noise, left center pink noise, right center pink noise, center channel pink noise, and mono pink noise. When you're doing your system, testing for left and right, you want to use mono pink noise, and then you can use these other ones to help refine the equalization after you've gotten the bass EQ part done. You can also have pink noise for just sub, mid bass, mid range, and treble. So this is the app that we use when, when we're setting up a car. All right, this one is gonna be quick. I would like to know what do you think of the Alpine A, Alpine S series speakers as an upgrade for a factory ones. As an upgrade to a factory one, I'm sure it'll sound better than what you have. Um, however, in my opinion, there are better speakers out there uh, for about the same amount of money. I'm not a big fan of those specific speakers. I like the R's, I like the Z's. The S just has never done anything for me. Um, maybe check out the Kecker, I'm sorry, the, the, the Kenwood Exelons or the Kicker CS. All right, uh, 2016 Highlander want to keep the factory head unit but upgrade the speakers and I... And I, think I, I think I answered oh, yeah? that one. Yeah, hold on, let me read this one. Hey, Dean and Fernando, I'm going to upgrade my Ford Escape with the Kicker key amp. Should I just disconnect the factory center speaker? Also wondering where you install the 501 control knob on your daughter's Escape. Uh, I mean, when setting up, I would definitely just, you, you're definitely gonna have to disconnect the center channel for sure. The only speakers that can play when doing the key setup are the ones that are attached to the key amp. Um, so this one doesn't than, have the amplified system? I don't know, I just said, it well, may, center channel. Yeah, but that doesn't mean it has the amplified system. I mean, Fords, okay. a lot of the Fords have just an output for center. It's one of those things you're gonna to wanna to hear after, before and after, and see if you like it with it and you like it without it. There's no wrong answer to that. It's just which one you like better. Uh, the bass knob we put um, on the bottom below, like between your legs, it's like right there. We didn't do anything special with it because uh, we had actually hit it to begin with because I didn't want her playing with it, but now she's 21, she can take her, do whatever you want. Is the power from the Audio Control LC61200 too much power for the Focal Experts three-way components? Or the three-way set, run it active. No, no, we've done that before, it's kind of nice. Yeah, <clears throat> lots of power, good times. Good power. Uh, we haven't had a chance to play with the new 12-channel DSP yet. I mean, dude, we can't, we're, we got a stack of stuff we need to play with. We, we're not asking for more, but no, it's on the list of things to do for sure. Uh, Eric is the same way for the, um, where is it? That one, right, right behind me. Uh, all snap the... on, we haven't have uh... We just got it last week, so yeah. we haven't had a chance to really and play with it And we have brand yet. new cars, so they don't need to. Well, I mean, we do, but we, we just haven't had yeah. a chance. Yeah. It's, you know, I, I'm not gonna hook it up to anything until we're done reading the owner's manual, and this weekend I just didn't have time to deal with it. Um, I know, it's sad. Always making excuses. But we'll have it ready to go by the end of the week for sure. Mr. Bill Freeman, what is going on, my friend? Uh, see the mini DSP has a 12 channel DSP car up. Yes, someone did point that out to me um, And it's got a bunch of other neat stuff mini DSPs That brand seems to be uh, coming on strong for sure, but it's still an expensive DSP. It's not like you're getting I mean, it's still a thousand dollar DSP, so um, How do you bypass the positive battery OEM terminal that has factory fuses if is there no room for a zero gauge wire? You don't what you may want to try to do is find a battery post uh, extension and mm -hmm. or a double battery post. I, we've had people actually bring them in where it has been a secondary battery post that you can mount off of the first boat, uh, post. I don't know where they got them. I'm assuming somewhere on the internet. It's this new thing that like you can type in cool oh, all words these, yeah. and they find stuff. But what you might want to find is the secondary post adapter. It was really cool. Uh, another thing too that I know we did in one car was he brought in a, what was the brand we were talking about today that just came out with speakers? Sky High. Sky High, brought in well, a Sky High distribution it, yeah. block mm -hmm. that had a bunch of set screws on top and we were able to connect the Sky High to the factory bracket, put a post onto the Sky High, connect our factory fuse terminal onto mm -hmm. that and then we had five other posts for wiring. Mm -hmm. So you just gotta get creative, there's ways to do it. 
check out them. So with the DM18, how would I go about getting a specific curve? I'm having a hard time finding a curve that like it. It's a three-way active front, coaxials, rear, and sub. You just asked the question that people doing sound have asked for a millennia. What is the best curve? There's no right or wrong answer to these questions as far as what's the best curve, what's the only curve. There, that's the problem with DSP is that it's sound. Sound is subjective. One guy might like this, one guy might like that. <coughs> when setting the product up, you could do it one of two ways. You can set it for flat, which is basically the curve that just kind of rolls down like this and then goes flat and then rolls. If you go over to Audio Frog and find their tuning section there, they talk about it. Another place that you can go if you're interested in like upping your learning game as far as that goes, uh, hold on here, uh, where this gentleman will help you out and there's three classes you can take is educar training at teachable.com now he has a curve that you can download plus he talks to you about how to get to that curve mm -hmm. and i believe the, the latest one talks more about that stuff but um there's three classes the first one you could probably skip and just go to the last two but it's a great great resource as far as learning how to tune your dsp um, um all right jonathan and of course the audio frog stuff is is free all right, Jonathan, no, it's not like we don't want to speak about sound down because Kicker pay us. No, Kicker doesn't, Kicker doesn't pay, pay us. us. Nobody pay <laughs> I us. I wish they did. Right. I uh, know. Uh, actually, that's not true. Well, yeah. Audio anyway, Control Audio does, Control does is us. actually a sponsor for this show. And you know that because we say they are a sponsor of the show, which tonight they're not a sponsor <coughs> of the show, so we right. can say anything we want about them. But no, uh, I don't know sound down, about Sundown. They say the subwoofers are very nice. I mean, we've put the in we put a, we put the Sundown subwoofer mm -hmm. and the guy the gentleman's car last year, uh, mm -hmm. that giant twelve inch that I was just like freaking googly eyes over because yeah. I was like, man, I want. To. I mean, it was just as deep as the car yeah. as, as the it was tall. <coughs> and we done two subwoofer. I mean, two amplifiers that they actually Were customer they brought. Yeah, Sundowns. Oh, okay. uh, then they have a problem. Amplifiers. With Other than that, we. Yeah, it, it's the thing is, is I don't want to sit here and give you mis or disinformation. Right. To speak yeah. about something that I don't know enough about, like Sundown and like some of these other like Terra amps, we've put literally one Terra amp yeah. in. I'm not going to sit here and sound like an authority on Terra amps. I don't know anything about them. Um, so to me, that would be a disservice to you and everyone that follows the show. So it's not that we're ignoring them. I just don't know how to compare them to them because I don't have enough of a base in which to compare them to. The whole purpose of the show is to give you guys the most reliable, accurate information as possible. Uh, and we tell you when it's our opinion because I don't, I don't want to... It's an opinion. And I honestly don't have an opinion on them because I haven't done <coughs> enough with them to form one. All right. Uh, when you do the big three upgrade, do you fuse the upgraded power wire to the alternator? Uh, to the I, alternator if you you add in wire not replacing the factor in don't seems that people do that if you so do you how do you calculate the fuse wire? i do i do i always fuse that <coughs> wire between the alternator and the battery because it's a wire connected between the alternator and the battery but you're correct most people do not mm -mm. and that is entirely up to you how do you, well, you figure out how much amperage your alternator is. That's really all you're doing. You know, if you have a 120 amp alternator, then, you know, probably go 150 amp fuse just so you have a little over, obviously, and then you're good to go. It's there again to protect the wire. That's all you're doing. I mean, you're just putting something there to hopefully protect the wire so that if the battery does something bad, it blows the fuse. That's it. Uh, uh, Frank. No problem, man. Thank you for watching. He just got the JVC radio that he won on the Ooh. 12 days of Christmas. So, oh, damn. awesome, man. <clears throat> uh, loaded 212 box for a Toyota Avalon that matches well with the audio control uh, 1.1500. 1. 1, loaded. Um, I mean, if you could fit it, that Q class 12. 212 box from Kicker would be phenomenal. Yeah. Because, um, I mean, that, that, would, that would eat that for sure. Um, the Q-Class 12 box, it's a gorgeous box, too. Oh, Dude, I love the way that carpet feels. Yeah. But you said pre-made. There again, if you like Sundown, I know the Sundowns will work with that, too, because they have subwoofers that handle power. Pre-loaded. But you said pre-loaded. So. I mean, loaded 12, 212s. I mean, you can yeah. put anything, you know? 
Well, that's the thing. So if you go over to like A-Trend, like we were talking about <coughs> earlier, A-Trend makes boxes for specific subwoofers. So they make pre-manufactured boxes that are designed to work with other brand <laughs> subwoofers because they're a box manufacturer. So they have like DD Audio, um, they have Alpine, um, and they have a half dozen other ones too. Scar Audio also makes uh, loaded enclosures for their boxes um, that they sell on their own. So there's, there's a lot of them out there, but... You know, if you're looking for something that's a monster woofer, right ready to go, the L7 Q Class subwoofer will definitely do that for mm -hmm. sure. Q Class all the way. And there, God, they're so nice. Uh, where do you recommend to secure an amplifier on the 2018 F150? Okay. Secure the amplifier? I mean, we always go in the back of the seat. Well, no, behind the back seat, not on the seat, seat yes. but on the firewall. There's yeah. the the factory amplifier goes on the <laughs> driver if it's a regular extended cab. There again, variations on the truck. I'm not sure, <laughs> but if it's a four door extended cab pickup truck, yeah, the factory amplifier is located behind me right here as the driver. Uh, when you lift up and you know when you stick your finger in there and you pull the seat up, right where that factory bracket is, right beneath that is where that factory amp goes. I'm sure you can Google Sony system and F-150 and kind of get an idea or uh, any one of our Instagram pages. Yeah, I mean, you, you'll you, see you what it looks that. like, but um, that's where we put the amplifier. Also, it's a 2018 F-150. That's a, a aluminum body? That is aluminum. That's the one we were talking about earlier. Okay, so if that's aluminum body, we definitely recommend you to run the ground straight to the battery. Yeah, just like we talked about yep. earlier in the show. Um, also, if you're going to be putting a full system in it, if you would like, you could also get the DFO2 harness from iData, which is right here, and a DSR1, and that will reprogram your factory non-premium sound system to a variable voltage flat ANC fake engine noise off output. So if you have the 2-liter engine, you're fine. If you have a 3-liter engine, it's going to have fake engine noise, which means you get a growl, and your subwoofers go crazy. Uh, the DFO2 with the DSR1 combination is designed to go in, and it will flash your radio back to 5-volt um, variable voltage output, flat, shut off your ANC. It's a spectacular way of doing things. We do have a video showing you how that works, and it's pretty cool. All right. Hi from Northern Indiana. Hi. I've been installing a new system in my eight, wait, wait for it, an F-150. <laughs> That's what he said. Uh, I have a 4060 back seat. Yep. I and I have a slim. Yeah. Okay. Uh, cool. Yeah. Either way. Uh, it's close. Yeah. A slim profile JL10 subwoofer. I want to keep under the 40 portion okay. of the seat. Have you guys built a box for that? Should I downfire it? Is that enough room for that? Um, I haven't built a box for anything in a great many years no. uh, because I just I just don't do that anymore. I, I've, I've, <clears throat> I've huffed enough sawdust in my in my time. I will tell you that those woofers do work in exceptionally small enclosures. Mm -hmm. I would probably downfire it um, just because of the way the seat is built. Uh, it kind of has two angles to it, so it kind of does something like this, which is weird. So I would definitely go for down firing. Um, just keep it off the floor enough to where, you know, it, it, it can breathe. But, uh, you know, it's it's an exceptional Man. woofer, so... Yeah. I mean, down fire. Up but fire. I will tell you, space makes space. So if you yeah. don't have the right amount of airspace, you're not going to get the best performance out of the driver. So you do have to figure that out. My exhaust makes farty noises. No, that's just you in the front seat, Bobby. Oh, really? Stick with OFC on all wire, please. Oh, uh, audio mean, control. You know, unless you're, you know, <clears throat> Vega. All right. Audio control LC amplifiers. Do they signal some from two input channels to provide audio for channel on the amplifier? Say that again now. What was that? Audio control LC amplifiers. Yes, Do the they LC. Do they signal some from two input channels? Yes. To provide audio for the channels? Yes. On the amplifier? Correct. Okay, so yeah, just like some the So basically, the what the question is, 
Most amplifiers have an A plus B or A plus B, C plus D switch. And, and what he's get, getting at is does the audio control LC amplifiers allow you to plug one RCA in, into them and then populate the whole amplifier? The LC is the non-DSP <coughs> versions. The DSP versions do it, of course, because it's just done in the software. But yes, there is a switch on the LC amplifiers that is the LC sum. And what that allows you to do is put inputs one and two in and have it feed all four inputs. It's it's a switch. Yeah? Yeah, I can show you. I actually have the one for today sitting here. Right here, it is located right there. So that is the summing switch there, front and rear bus sum. So that's it. Okay why that camera was worth its weight in gold. Uh, Dean, is Foxbox back up and running? Not that I'm aware of. Uh, he has not called us, and I'm sure he would if it was. Uh, speaker wire questions. Any preference on CCA or OFC wires? I believe that's why he wrote these OFC oxygen-free copper yep. all the way. Yep. <laughs> you know, here's the thing, man. Do whatever you want. If you want to use copper-clad aluminum, Obviously, it's not the best choice, but if it's what you can afford, I understand it. Save more money would be my answer to you. Totally. But if you absolutely just like, no, I'm going to do this, whatever. If you need 16-gauge copper, you're going to need 12-gauge of the CCA. So you always have to go a size up no matter what you're doing. And that's it. The other thing, too, is you might get some electrolysis where the wire just turns to dust. It happens. Uh, anytime you do mixed, and you can't solder it either. Yeah, totally sucks. Okay. All right, speaking of ground, have you ran across the negative terminal on the Hyundai that has two small wires on it? After looking all over, I found that this controls the alternator and its output. Yeah. How can you upgrade the main ground to the body? It's a sense wire is what, what it is. Those little wires are sense wires. So, I mean, I don't really think you should run into any problems, like just leaving them alone. Um, yeah. The, and this is a problem we run into on a lot of these modern cars, is that these charging systems are becoming more and more smart. And they, they don't like you to screw with, like, the ground plane at all they get kind of touchy-feely so you have to be real careful as far as what you do um, in that particular case uh, those wires are there to monitor they probably is a uh, uh, they may have a um, an amp meter somewhere that they're attached to like um, the f-150 we keep talking about that's actually built into the terminal so the clamp is built into mm -hmm. the ground terminal there it's a lot of fun guys this stuff isn't getting any easier you just you know, common sense and just taking your time, doing as much research as you can, and then not always doing what everyone on the internet tells you to do just because they don't know shit. All right. Um, I got 210 JL W6W3 and then audio control LC 1.800. Nice combination. Can it handle the power? Yeah, why not? Power is usually not the problem, okay? Power, this is the loaded gun question, where people say, if, if I have this gun with bullets and it sits on the counter, how could it possibly do any harm? It can't. Um, if I have an amplifier that's bigger than the rated power of the subwoofer, is it going to blow the subwoofers? Can it do it? Yes, of course it can do it. Is it going to do it? That's up to you, because of how you set it up. It always comes down to the end user. Stuff doesn't break itself. You break it. That's, it's always what it is. Anyone that has ever blown a speaker, they blew, you blew that speaker. I've blown speakers before and I knew I'd done it. I was just like, yeah, I want to torture this thing. <laughs> Give me a magnifying glass and some ants. I want to have some fun. Okay. So it all depends on how you set it up. You know, if you set up your crossover, keep your gain where it needs to be, listen to it. Um, there's a lot of things that can go into place that will allow you to have a spectacular experience. Power is key, though. I always want to go with as much power as I can possibly get my hands on. So. All right. Let me see. One more. One more, and then we got to get one out of here. One more? 
2004 Dodge Ram 1500, Pioneer 2330, 3.5 in the dash, 6.5 in the doors, and 5.5 and, and, yep. five and a quarter in the reels. Can I use a two four channel amplifiers? Two four channel amplifiers? Two of course four you channel, can use two four channel right. amplifiers. Yeah, I would totally do that. Uh, this is one of the pet peeves I have with those particular systems. If you don't buy a, like for example, Kicker and now uh, soon Kicker and Kenwood currently makes like that set where you get the three and a half or the two inch and the six by nine. Those are made to work together. They are matched to work together. If you get a six by nine that has a tweeter, they're again matched. There's an attenuation for the tweeter if it's too much. When you grab a random three and a half and a random six by nine, meaning they're they're not made to work together, but it's a, they're the same brand, okay? Then you run into a problem. It's like you're gonna have to cap in, in like you have a two channel amp. It's like, so we have a three and a half and a six by nine. Could you get farther apart? So you have to cap off the three and a half, which means you it's a 6 dB crossover at like, I don't know, 300 hertz, which is really nothing. So like 120 at 12 dB, which is there again, like nothing. And then your six by nine, you want it to play <coughs> down. It's a six by nine. You want to get some of that mid bass out of it. So you might cross it over like 60 or 70. Well, you can't because that six and a half, the three and a half in the dash now is just dying. It's going, oh my God, stop. So you end up having to turn that crossover up. And it's like, this sucks. I've lost all my mid bass. Now, if you go with a four channel amp on the front that allows you to have level control, which keep in mind when you're doing the two channel, these three and a half in the dash are blasting you out of the car the whole time because they're just so much more efficient. They're small and they're on the windshield. So you never even actually hear the six by nine because they're not, you'll never hear them, they're too down, too low. But going with a four channel amp on the front stage, then you can attenuate those, cross them over properly, and attenuate these the right level and cross those over properly, and you end up with a much more enjoyable system. <coughs> if you're gonna go two four channels, even better, so that everything is on their own channels and you can have all the control that you could possibly ever want. All right, this is the last one. Hey guys, I have a 2006 Land Rover LR3. Would like to upgrade my radio. What do you recommend? Oh, so... How would that be an easy question to answer? Uh, need help. They say I will lose the 12 speakers. Yeah. Yeah. If I upgrade it. Yeah. Yeah, they're right. Because no one makes an interface for that. Mm -mm. So it's, it's a tough one. You're going to, that's, that's not an easy one to do. Everything you've read is correct. It's going to be a full, big, crazy upgrade. If you want to keep that factory system it's it's not going to be something that you're going to be easy easily able to do uh one company you may want to just check out to see if they make anything for it is go to spiralaudio.com spiralaudio.com they're importers for connects 2 which is a european company that amp owns that makes a lot of the adapters for stuff like that so if anybody's going to make an oddball piece for that it's going to be connects 2 they're american are distributed here by Spiral Audio. So check out spiralaudio.com and they may have it. I, I wouldn't be surprised. Like the Porsche we just did, they had the smart harness for the Porsche. It's wonderful. Um, so check that out for sure. And with that, that's the end of the show. That's Monday, guys. That's the whole thing. Whew, it's been fun. Uh, C2 let's... Two? Need most. Okay, there you go. What's See? that? No, like uh, Lewis. Yeah, Lewis C2. C2. Yeah, C2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So... Yeah, and Lewis would know because he's over there and he gets, yep, he's over in yep. uh, Portugal. So they get fun stuff like that. All right, let's go to the laptop. DNF Tool Drawer is a place you can find all the cool tools that we use. That's right, they're all here. Uh, just simply click on a link. Let's go to lighting. And you can find all those cool lights that we use. Oh, yeah, they're right there. How fun is that? And then if you come over here, you can go to teespring.com slash store slash five star and you can find all the cool shirts that we use as well as cool jackets to stay nice and warm this winter time. Ooh, look at that one. That's the OG right there. That's the original one. That's the first one we ever made. But definitely check that stuff out. It helps to go to support the show. And of course, we're on Patreon if you want to have fun there. And that's it, guys. That brings us to the end of the show. That's Monday's Facebook Live show. For those of you who didn't know, if you caught on late and you're like, oh, I want to rewatch this, you can rewatch it tomorrow on YouTube. We do the rebroadcast there. We take the questions. We take us. We mix them all together, and it looks really cool. Uh, but that's where it's at every time it's there. And if you didn't know, Monday, we also are starting to bring back the Instagram uh, rebroadcast show on Mondays to kind of fill in that void. Some of you guys were really bummed that we stopped doing that. 
I thought because Instagram brought back or brought in Instagram TV that that would be, and it was like, no, it's not. So we brought it back. Yay! <laughs> Good times for everyone. Yeah. And with that, make sure to check us out on Instagram, and you can find us everywhere else. You guys have a great rest of your week. We'll see you tomorrow if you're on Instagram. If not, we'll see you back here Saturday on YouTube at 6 o'clock. Bye. Bye. Bye.